hello, how are you all? I hope you're doing well. So let's talk about what's happening on the border. Uh, so what we've been hearing so far from the Biden administration is this is not a crisis. It's not a crisis. It is absolutely not a crisis. It is merely a challenge. And the only reason we have this challenge is because of the inhumane policies of the Trump administration. Stupid. Jeez. Uh, meanwhile, they're not letting reporters actually go and take pictures of what's going on on the border. So we're going to talk about all that in a second. First, I thought it would be fun to visit Memory Lane. Uh, one in particular, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And I picked her out because she was one of the most vocal people about what was going on on the border. She likened it to concentration camps. Anyway, let's just see what she has to say. So this is a live stream that Alexandria Ocasio put out in 2019 where she was talking about the inhumane things that she was seeing on the border and how it made her feel. So let's just check that out for just a second. The <laughs> United States is running concentration camps on our southern border. I want to talk to the people that are concerned enough with humanity to say that we should not, that never again means something. Okay, so that was her on what she saw on the border. This was the tweet that she put out. This is back in 2019. She said, I'll never forget this because it was the moment I saw with my own eyes that the America I love was becoming a nation that steals refugee children from their parents and cage them. More kids died after this to date. No one has been held accountable. We need to save the kids. And remember this photo shoot that happened, which embarrassingly for AOC, unfortunately, some some pictures came out that was a different angle. And you can see that what she was actually looking at was an empty parking lot. And the reason this was such a big deal is because these, a lot of these photos came out at the beginning of Trump's presidency and it made a lot of people really mad and it, it turned into one of the biggest talking points for people critic, uh, people that are criticizing the Trump administration. He puts the kids in the cages, the kids in the cages, kids in the cages. I even had friends that were using this talking point and I even saw it on TV up until a few months ago, right before the election, they were still using this talking point, even though... This has been debunked I don't know how many times we found out that those pictures that came out were actually from 2014 under the Obama-Biden administration and that's when these cages were actually built. Do you remember what Trump said during the debate, who built the cages, Joe? Well, whether you like them or not, he was right about this. Um, and actually, a few of the journalists I follow, well, Glenn Beck and I know a few other journalists, um, in 2014, they discovered that uh, they discovered these holding facilities for kids. They went, they took those photos, uh, not Glenn Beck personally, those photos, but he was one of the ones on the border seeing what was happening. They tried to break the story to everyone, every single news outlet. No one would take the story. All of a sudden, Trump is in office. They took the story, released the photos. They went viral. Everyone was was trying to say they were under the Trump administration, that this is what he was doing. That, in fact, was not true. Now, it's fair to criticize uh, governments and how they handle things, but if you're going to criticize Trump for pictures that happened under the Obama administration, you're going to have to do both, right? Well, I guess not. Uh, <laughs> I guess not. But let's look at what's happening right now, okay? So that was back then. And I'll, I'll circle back to that in a minute. But since we're talking about circling back, let's uh, play this clip from Jen Psaki. Uh, this was earlier today in a press briefing at the White House with Jen Psaki. And people are asking her about transparency on the border because some news came out recently that the uh, Biden administration did not want reporters or journalists going to the borders. They, in fact, close those off to them, which is odd because uh, Biden is really big on transparency. So let's see what Jen said earlier today. In the spirit of transparency mm -hmm. to rebuild public trust, when will reporters be allowed to tour facilities holding children who cross the southern border? And are there any concerns that the images from those tours might show that there's a crisis? 
Well, first, um, we are working to finalize uh, details, and I hope to have an update in the coming days. Uh, we are working through with uh, the Department of Health and Human Services and also the Department of Homeland Security to ensure uh, privacy and ensure we're following COVID protocols. We remain committed to transparency. And of course, as I noted last week, we certainly want to make sure that uh, the media has access. Okay, and that was Jen earlier today. I have one more video to show you. And then after that, we're going to look at what is actually going on on the border right now. And I'm just warning you, you might want to get like a coffee, a tea, uh, an afternoon cocktail. It's it's pretty angering what's going on. But first, um, so this was yesterday. This is our, our Secretary of Homeland Security on the Chris Wallace show. I actually do not like Chris Wallace, but what, what I'm finding with some of these news outlets is it's getting so bad they're having to actually be honest right now and do honest reporting. So I do appreciate um, even the left-leaning uh, uh, news outlets that are pressing on this issue because it needs to be pressed. Uh, but this is, this is our Secretary of Homeland Security on Chris Wallace yesterday. But the day after President Biden took office, he made this promise to the American people. Take a look. The Vice President Harris and I and our entire administration will always be honest and transparent with you about both the good news and the bad. So why has the Biden administration refused to allow reporters to see for themselves and to record what the conditions are under which these minors are being housed? Why, in fact, did you when you went to the border on Friday and led a congressional delegation, why did you refuse to allow reporters to see the conditions under which these minors are being held? Uh, uh, two things, uh, Chris, if I may. Number one, let's not forget that we're in the midst uh, of a pandemic, and we are focused uh, on our operations, executing our operations in a crowded border patrol facility. Uh, where uh, hundreds of vulnerable migrant children are located, number one. And number two, we're working on providing footage so that the American public can see uh, the Border Patrol stations. And I would encourage uh, you and other reporters to see the facilities under the uh, control of the Health and Human Services Department, where those children are sheltered and where they belong and where we are moving them as quickly as possible. That safety excuse is quite convenient, isn't it? Well, guess what? Since they're not doing their jobs, somebody went and did their jobs for them. And these photos are actually coming from a Democratic representative. What is his name? Henry Kuhler? I don't know how to pronounce his name, but that's not important. We thank him. So this Democratic representative from Texas went to the border and took some pictures himself. So let's look at them. These pictures are dated today. Uh, under the Biden administration. So let's look at what's going on in these facilities. Uh, since they won't let us in, looks pretty crowded to me. You can see they don't have the cages necessarily. Instead, they have replaced them with this humanitarian um, separating plastic, which I, you could say is an improvement. Um, here's another one. Look how crowded this is. And here is another photo. You can see this same type of blankets that um, they were using in the photos we saw before. And that is what is going on on the border right now. Um, and then let's look at this tweet. So this is photos of Donna, Texas migrant camp obtained by Project Veritas. So Project Veritas, they're an investigative journalist, journalist group, and they actually went down on the border as well. And these are pictures that they have taken. Over 50 of the migrants were tested positive for you know what. There have been multiple sexual assaults, normal assaults, and daily medical emergencies. So, so how the heck did this happen and what is going on? If you were to ask the Biden administration, they will tell you that this is because of Trump. It was his problem and it was because of his 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 policies that were not humanitarian and, and all of that. Uh, so, but let's look at this article right now. It says Biden admin ignored warning signs that border could spiral into crossing. 
the Biden administration ignoring wording signs, including briefings from senior customs and border protection officials about an impending crisis at the U.S. southern border. The administration knew it was going to happen and everything since Biden took office has been how to manage it. The response is merely to manage the processing, not to stem the tide, a senior customs and border protection official told Fox News. Then candidate Joe Biden promised during the campaign to reverse a number of key immigration policies that enacted under President Trump, changes that border officials feared could fuel a surge at the border. Policies like the Migrant Protection Protocols, also known as Remain in Mexico policy, were crucial to ending catch and release, a policy in which migrants were released into the U.S. while awaiting immigration hearings. Trump administration officials warned, if MPP goes away, it'll be absolutely devastating. During President Biden's transition, Customs and Border Protection officials briefed his team about the probability of an increase in unaccompanied migrants trying to cross the border should be reversed. Should he reverse some of the predecessor's policies? The Washington Post reported this weekend. Again, so that's according to the Washington Post. This is the Washington Post is not a conservative or Republican publication. They are very left leaning. Um, Many in Central America spread the word that after January 20th, Biden's inauguration date, migrants at the border would have a better chance of getting into the U.S. Another policy that was a huge deal that Biden reversed was his policy that says that if somebody is coming from Central America and they're passing through other countries that are safer and the other countries that are asylum, that are offering asylum are offering asylum, then you have to take it in the first safest country that you go into. This was what was happening when Central Americans were coming up from Mexico. Mexico has a lot of really nice places in it. They were offering asylum to the migrants coming through Mexico. They declined. They didn't want it. They want to come to the U.S. And the reason that catch and release was such a bad policy is basically catch and release was you come over our, our um, border illegally and you saw and you want to apply for asylum once you cross the border we'll let you stay in America so basically they get a court date that's a few months from whenever they claim asylum status um, they're given that court date it's a few months later and then they're just left in the U.S. most of them never show up to court so they're just in the U.S. illegally and they stay here and that's how they get here and that said, 88 to 90 percent of people that claim asylum status do not qualify for asylum. So you have people that are basically taking advantage of our weak um, uh, border security and our weak laws, and they're being able to stay in the U.S. at the expense of taxpayers. And then this just came out today, and this is another reason why having these weak immigration laws and being weak on our border when so many people want to come here illegally, this is why it is inhumane. Um, traffickers at U.S.-Mexico border earned as much as $14 million a day last month. Month. This is in the Daily Wire. Traffickers bringing men, women, and children across the U across the U.S. Mexico border made as much as 11 million in a day, 14 million in a day in February, according to a new report published Monday. Trafficking is a multi-billion-dollar industry. A lot of these vulnerable populations use their life savings. Some are essentially indentured servants and they're working off this debt for a long period of time. In other cases, some of these migrants are asked to transport narcotics or some or some form of crime work work off a different part of their debt. According to smuggling fee revenues estimated by the Customs and Border Patrol, traffickers made $411.5 million in February ferrying people from Mexico and Central America countries to the U.S. border, or $14.7 million for each day in February. The report comes at costs of the border crisis are rising for the federal government. The cost to U.S. taxpayers now tops $5 million a day based on 2019 figures provided by Health and Human Services that put daily influx shelter costs at $100 per illegal alien or immigrant, whatever. Additional costs will include overtime and hotel costs for the hundreds of agents reassigned to Texas from other areas. For context, in 2019, Congress appropriated an extra, sorry about that, an extra $4.6 billion to handle a similar migrant surge in 2014. Congress gave President Obama an extra $2.7 billion to deal with his border crisis. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden's administration on Sunday awarded the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency 86.9 million to house illegal immigrants and hotels near the U.S.-Mexican border. 
people from other countries watch our politics. They know who the president is. They know who's in charge. They know who is for border border security. They know who is not. It was Nancy Pelosi that once said illegal immigrants are her constituents. I actually saw, I was watching a documentary. It's called America's Forgotten. And this sort of dives into the the border crossing the border crossing and and why people come come over and in this it was uh, the the girl was going like sort of undercover and this was a while back it was during um it was before we knew that Biden was going to run for president and she was in India and and sort of a, a poorer part of India and she was with a a I don't know if it was called a coyote but it was someone that was trying to sell um uh, the trek to come over the border illegally. They paid thousands of dollars for it. He had on his phone a video clip of the the presidential, the Democratic presidential primary debate. And it was like a 10 second clip, maybe even a five second clip. And the moderator asked all of the potential presidential candidates, all of the Democratic presidential, potential presidential candidates, he asked, would you give free health care to illegal immigrants? Most of them said yes. That video clip was played to a potential buyer and that is what sold the person. So the person then gave thousands of dollars to come over our border illegally. That is all it took. So when when you have Joe Biden saying, I'm, I'm going to legalize 11 million people, when you have Nancy Pelosi saying that illegal immigrants are my constituents, when you repeal all of these things that were actually working, what do you think is going to happen? I was actually talking to a friend of mine um, who lives close to the Canadian border, and I was telling her another story that came out recently is that they're trying desperately to manage this situation, and one of the things they were thinking of doing is transporting some of the um, people from the southern border up to um, closer to the Canadian border, up into that area. And uh, I, I was talking about this to my friend, and she goes, well, you know what? Uh, I actually, she goes, I, I live around the Canadian border and what happened when President Trump was in office are a lot of our illegal immigrants actually went to Canada illegally and stayed there. And she goes, now we're hearing that a lot of them are coming back because they know that Biden is the president. And you keep hearing, oh, the unaccompanied children, they're being ripped from their families. Well, a lot of these children, those people that they're with, those are not their families. These are people that are either renting them or using them to get across the border because if you're a family unit or if you're a child, you're more likely to be accepted into the United States. I mean, you hear the rhetoric that they're saying already. Also, this is another point that I don't hear people talking about enough. A lot of people will lie about their ages. I don't know the exact numbers, but it happens. They lie about their ages, and if they don't have papers on them, you have no way to say that they're not the age they're telling you. They'll say that they're younger than they are because if you're a minor, you have a better chance of staying in the U.S. and you get much better um, like benefits. I actually, I used to work for a state-run psychiatric hospital. We had an individual in our care who was an illegal immigrant and we had him for a while, ended up being a really dangerous individual. Well, we found out after the police had to come in and take him out because that's how dangerous he was. And we found out that he had a potential like murder charge on him. When we started getting more information about who this person was, because we were a state facility, we had to take this person in. We couldn't just take him away. He was being housed with other minors and we found out he was in fact not a minor. He was lying about his age this entire time. And this was a very dangerous individual that was housed with other minors we had girls as young as 14 that this person was interacting with on a daily basis so that is also another thing that you don't talk about you're putting all these kids in these in these migrant facilities yet you could be putting them with people that are lying about their age that are in fact not minors and this is a huge thing you don't have papers on people that come over illegally you don't know their criminal history you don't know their vaccination history you have no idea who they are you only have what they are telling you and people yes unfortunately it's sad. I know we don't live in kumbaya, la la land, um, where we're all just like running through daisies and we're all being nice and kind to each other and peace, love, and ignorance or whatever else you want to call it. Um, but people lie to get things. Um, also, uh, people that have criminal histories will come over the border. But there goes your criminal history. It's no more now because nobody knows who you are. And especially in Europe, I don't know how it happens here in the US, but in Europe, a lot of people will that are coming illegally, they will rip up their identification. There's there's an area in Spain where a lot of people come over and it's just nothing but ripped up IDs. 
because they if you know who people are if you have an ID you can send them back if you don't know who they are where are you going to send them and you would think even if they wanted to be so radical even if they wanted to overturn everything that Trump did you would think they would wait until our country was open up until uh, the pandemic is not a, a fear for people um, we heard there are people that are testing positive that are being let in why would you do this um, I, I, I can't again you need merely a, 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 an elementary education to understand that this is not a good idea and this decision was not in the best interest of the American people. This decision was not in the best interest of the migrants that are coming across or the illegal immigrants that are coming across, um, but it was the best decision for the cartels. They're happy. They're raking in the dough. So good job, Joe Biden. And there are so many people in Middle Eastern countries that are facing religious persecution. There are so many women that are that are basically like they, they have no rights and some of them probably want to come here and seek asylum and they actually meet asylum status. But when we're overflowed with all of them, uh, these people just jump in line ahead of all of the uh, ahead of all of the people that are around the world. Don't we owe everyone around the world an equal opportunity to claim asylum in the United States if they actually meet the asylum status? The people that are coming over the border, most of them, we, we just saw the number, 88 to 90 percent of them are economic migrants. They are not asylum seekers. There are economic migrants and keep in mind we have record high unemployment right now. We are in the middle of a huge issue where we are as America are trying to get ourselves back on our on our feet. My my neighborhood that I live in, uh, I can't even tell you how many businesses have shut down since uh, a year ago uh, since we had to do what 15 days to slow the spread which turned into a year to slow uh, a year to slow the spread. But anyway there there is nothing humanitarian about having a weak border there's nothing humanitarian about it and I want to read this to you one more time because I think I could actually read this for every single video that I make um by swell is a Chinese epithet meaning naive western educated person who advocates for peace and equality only to satisfy their own feeling of mere moral superiority a by swell only cares about topics such as immigration, minorities, LGBT, and the environment while being obsessed with political correctness to the extent that they import backwards Islamic values for the sake of multiculturalism. The Chinese see the Baswell as ignorant, arrogant Westerners who pity the rest of the world and think they are saviors. All right, guys, that's everything I have for you today. I'll see you later. Bye.